Hey guys, welcome to another episode on TFB TV. Today we're in Bangkok and we are looking at some of the gun stores that are in Bangkok here. And there is a district down here which is literally just choked with gun stores and stuff on the street. We'll look at the other stuff on the street here in a bit as well. Um, but the gun stores down in Bangkok, there's some up in Chiang Mai where I just was, but down in Bangkok it's just literally this whole district where you just walk down the street and they're just filled with different stores and stuff. Um, something to understand about the gun stores that are in Bangkok is that because firearms are so expensive here, right? So if we take, you know, a simple, uh, like a Glock, a Glock 17, maybe a Gen 3 or a 4, you know, in Thailand, you're looking at a cost point of something like, I think 200,000 baht or something like, uh, what is it, 3,000 or 2,500 dollars. Um, so firearms are not exactly like they are in the States where, you know, it's a very mainstream sort of market. You're looking at, you know, a, your basic Glock, something at like, $500. So with that being said, a lot of the gun stores here are more like sort of boutique, like niche markets where they have stuff for sale um, in the shops, but you can't exactly just waltz in and, you know, start looking at stuff. You know, they have, uh, it's kind of like a very interesting market there. Anyways, guys, we were very lucky, and one of the stores that we were able to talk to here, a store named Piseat Firearms. If you're ever down here, give them a lookout. They have a website, PiseatFirearms.com, and uh, they actually have a Facebook as well called Piseat Firearms on Facebook, so give them a lookout as well. Before we go any further, I really would like to thank Venture Munitions as well for helping us out with the ammo and stuff that we use to film these episodes. Anyway, so I thought I'd take a look at some of the basic offerings that are in a typical Thai gun store. So to start off with, we got a Glock Gen 5, and this is just hitting the Thai market as well. It's obviously been in the U.S. market, um, but Glocks are really popular here for a lot of different reasons. There's a lot of IPSC, and there's a lot of IDPA for your stock options. A lot of guys use uh, Glocks. However, when it comes to a lot of the competition shooting in Thailand, you're looking at a lot of the Tenfanglos from Italy. And these are really popular for a lot of shooters because they're customizable, but also they're at an economic budget because you realize you're already cost, you're already spending so much money on just your, your stock options. So it's kind of hard to get to you know that SDI bracket without really breaking the bank and bringing stuff into Thailand. Apart from Tanfiglio, we also have CK Arms, which is out of Georgia. They are a custom uh, 1911 race gun manufacturer. And so you've got a bunch of these guys here. Now, talk about calibers here, you'll notice there's a lot for sale. These two guys are both in 9mm, but, but you'll get some that you'll see every now and again in 38 Super. You'll see that in some of the competitions as well. In addition, a lot of ties really like their less bears. This particular one, this is a less bear. I'm going to be really careful handling it, but this is actually in 45. Anyways, guys, so you have uh, your less bear and you've got a lot of, you know, custom 45s and a lot of ties really like their 45s here. Um, on top of that 45 thing, there's no revolvers in this particular store, but something I've noticed is that ties really like their revolvers too. This goes along, there's, uh, there's a lot of tie guys who really like cowboys and like you'll see cowboy hats and like cowboy boots and stuff like that for sale, um, but that's out there as well. Next up after handguns was probably most popular is shotguns. And I've seen this a couple of places, but you've got a bunch of Benelli M4s here that some guys have, but mostly you've got, you know, your commercial Remington, commercial Winchester stuff that you find here. Um, there's a couple different makes of the Benelli. We took a little shot of some up in Chiang Mai. This one, the stock actually extends out to the right and it locks into position like this. Um, now realize in Thailand, uh, this is actually a full length. But the one that we shot up in Chiang Mai was the barrel actually came up to a lot shorter and realized that the barrel conditions in Thailand, the barrel limitations are something like 12 or 14 inches, not the usual 16 inches that you get in the States. So what would qualify as an SBR in the United States is not an SBR at all in Thailand. It's actually perfectly legal. Anyways, guys, so we've got a lot of these, you know, semi-auto loaders and we also have uh, side-by-sides and over-and-unders and that sort of stuff. But the thing to realize is there's not a lot of, there's really not any hunting in Thailand when it comes to shooting birds, when it comes to shooting grouse, that kind of thing. So what Thais use this for is they actually use this for going skeet shooting, clay pigeon shooting, and they actually use it more along those lines. In addition, it's a pretty nice piece just to have, and it's, uh, it's, it's a part of the culture of a lot of Thais really liking firearms. And finally, to cap this all off, what we have here are some of the more rifles. Now, you realize Thailand falls into one of those sorts of countries where, you know, a handgun round is perfectly permissible, 
a you know shotgun rounds are perfectly permissible anything shooting some of those rounds is perfectly legal but when you get to some of the rifles it's a little bit harder to own one and to maintain one and to get all the paperwork for it but regardless there are still a lot of ties who have rifles and when we say rifles we're not talking about semi-automatic AR-15s although some that is possible in some very rare cases what we're mostly talking about here are your bolt action stuff so for example here this is a Kelby's 308 rifle, and what is very popular here is the joining of IPSC and rifle shooting almost, and you're combining the two, and they have this interesting competition that we could sort of call it, you know, practical, um, it's sort of similar to the practical precision rifle stuff that we have in the States, but it's not quite at that level, I don't think. This is an example of one of the rifles that you would use in it. You know, we also have a, it's also a five round magazine fed from an Accuracy International as well. Um, this is probably going to be one of the more expensive pieces that you're going to see in this entire store. In Chiang Mai, there's a range where you get to shoot an Accuracy International and you pay something like 10,000 baht for two rounds. Um, we'll talk about that later in another video as well. This next rifle I have here is a bench rest rifle, which is also chambered in 308 Winchester, also a Kelby's gun as well. And, you know, it doesn't have a safety. This is a single shot. You just insert around there and you fire it just like our bench rest we have in the States. Um, there's less bench rest competition in Thailand, but there is some that does exist. The, one of the guys that works at this shop here actually has a number of awards when it comes to bench rest with that. So outside of the sort of stores that you see here, there's a lot of stuff that's also for sale on the street, and we were taking a look at that today. A lot of a lot of this fake stuff, you see fake Magpul products, you know, a lot of uh, you know your tactical gear, that sort of thing. You won't really see that inside some of these shops because this is just where the firearms are. You'll see that a lot in the streets there. Some of the stuff that I found neat there was they had these grips that are actually made in Thailand, so you're actually dealing with Thai wood. And some of them had these unique designs. You could buy a Remington 870 wooden grip, and you could put that on. You could also buy this really long revolver grip that I thought was interesting. You don't really see it all in the States, and the seller said it was for a two-handed sort of grip, but oh well, it's pretty big. Um, but that stuff is kind of weird to see just walking down the street here and just seeing some of the really jaunty stuff. Anyways, thanks guys. I really appreciate the viewership. If you like this episode, please consider checking us out on Patreon. We could really use the help. Until next time.